Now procedure calling. What are the steps associated with a procedure calling? The first one is place parameter in the register. So we need to place the parameter values in the register. Then transfer control to procedure, acquire storage uh, for procedure, perform procedures operation, which is inside the procedure, Re place result in, in register of the caller, and then return to place the call. So these are the, uh, these are the basic operations that we need to do when we are performing the procedure calling in MIPS. Register use. This slide gives the detail of the available registers, their nouns and their purposes. So the first one is A0 to A3, which is argument register. This is used to uh, pass argument to the functions and then V0 and V1, which is used for uh, return, return value. And then we have temporary registers, which are uh, T0 to T9 and then save register S0 to S7 and global pointer which points to the global variable in the memory then stack pointer which points to the stack in the memory frame pointer which points to frames starting points of the frames and RA which is return address register this this RA register gives us the return address when we return from the subroutine. In this slide, we will see how we can perform the procedure call in MIPS. To perform the procedure call, we have instructions uh, which is JAL. This is, uh, this is one instruction which is JAL and then we have JR. JAL is a J type instruction and JR is R type instruction. So what is the purpose of a JAL instruction? The first one is addresses of the following instruction is put in RA register. We already know what is RA register. RA register is register number 31. 30, register number 31 is used for data, storing return address and then, then jumps to the target address that means to the subroutine. Now if, if uh, I give you an example of this how this one works. Let's say we have a main program. Uh, main programs uh, uh, just an example let's say this is uh, the inside instructions inside the main program and then we have a uh, we have a subroutine and then the rest of the uh, function and then we have this subroutine and this subroutine uh, is the body of the subroutine and then return Return. Now, when uh, the program uh, starts executing, the, the first line of the program is this. So uh, the uh, the first line of the program uh, first line of the program is this. Now after this, the uh, the pointer comes here, then comes to the next line, and then when it sees the function, then the pointer uh, then jumps to this function and executes uh, whatever inside the function, and then returns to the main function now uh, just uh, let me remove this uh, this arrow uh, and draw it again uh, and uh, so the pointer returns to the main function here now the point here when uh, the pointer or the program returns to the main function which uh, uh, instruction it, so it should start executing should it start executing the first instruction? If it does that, then what would happen? After the first instruction, it executes again, then third. And on the fourth line, it would see again that function. So when it sees the function, the pointer goes to that subroutine and this would become an infinite loop. So which uh, line the program should start executing after the return, after it has the return value, it should start executing from uh, this line. Now, let's say the memory address uh, uh, or the uh, address where the instruction, this instruction is stored is x, 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 x. Now, RA register, RA register would be holding onto this x, 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 this memory address. So, when the program returns to the main function from the subroutine, 
program reads the value of the RA register. When it reads the value of the RA register, then it sees that the RA register holds this memory address that is XXXX. When a, a program sees that the memory address is IXXXX, then it starts executing from this address. Now, how can we read the memory address or how can we read the content of RA register? JR. This stands for jump return to whatever the value that RA register holds, uh, which means RA register holds a memory address. And this is how procedure call works in MIPS. Let's uh, discuss leap procedure uh, for an example. Let's say we have this C code. We have this C code. This is a code that is leap procedure. So how we can uh, write MIPS code for this leap procedure? Uh, see, we have uh, arguments, integers G, H, I, and J, and then we have uh, return F. So the, this this assignment is is similar that you have already seen. Now we already have uh, have seen in the register list for argument which register should we use for argument. We need to use register starting from A0 to A3. So let's say we assign uh, A0, uh, A0 to G, uh, G. That means A0 would store the value of G as, as it is uh, uh, said here uh, or given here that, that G, H, I, J. These are the uh, variables which are stored in A0, A1, a2 and A3. These are the uh, register allocation for these arguments. And for return, for return value, uh, we have two registers. One is V0 and the other one is V1. So since there is only one return value, so we'll be using a V0. And F is save value, so we'll be using S0 for storing the save value which is needed when you are working with the stack. This would be the first time that we will be working with stack. This slide shows the MIPS code of the previous uh, slides leap procedure that uh, written in C. So this is this is our uh, MIPS code for the leap, uh, leap procedure. Uh, the first two lines, this creates stack space for the variable for our uh, variable which is a uh, whatever the value that we have stored in s0 uh, we'll be storing it in this stack space okay that's why stack space is created here and then this is the procedure body where the procedure is performed that is f is equal to g plus h minus i plus j this is wh where that operation is performed and here we are transferring this S0 value to the return register, uh, return value register because we need to register this value. Uh, sorry, we need to return this value to the uh, function and without transferring the, the value to this uh, V0 register, we cannot return this value to the main function. And once we uh, part from this line, this two line again brings whatever we have stored in stack in this, this part of the code into the uh, register uh, area and then this part JRRA that means the pointer uh, returns to the main function. This is how the uh, this entire code works. This slide so shows how stack can store or uh, what stack can store as you can see here that this is our frame pointer and this is our stack pointer. Frame pointer points to where the frame starts and stack pointer points to the uh, stack memory location. Now, the, as you see, this is the frame pointer uh, uh, and uh, this is the stack pointer. Uh, so what do we, we can have? A safe argument register. So if there is any argument register uh, that we need to use for other uh, for storing other arguments, then uh, we need to transfer that into the stack space then uh, it could be a saved return register, saved, uh, say, saved, saved register, that means the value that we save in the S type registers and uh, it could be local arrays and so on. When we transfer all of them 
uh, all all of them into the register again then then see the stack comes back to its normal state which was this okay This slide shows how a memory layout works or how a memory stores different kinds of data. The data could be a text, static variables or dynamic data or it could be stack. So what is text? Text is nothing but, uh, but the text is program code itself. And what is static data? Static data are the uh, global variables. For example, if we write a code, we may declare that the pi is equal to 3.14. So that is kind of static data and we could de define that uh, in, in, in the beginning of the program that pi would be 3.14 for the entire rest of the program. So that is global data and this is stored in the global space in the memory. And then dynamic data that is heap. Uh, dynamic data are data uh, where you do not know uh, the length of the data but uh, you you have uh, uh, you have methods to allocate memory for them dynamically in c we have malloc and in java we have new these are the two methods that we can uh, we can use when we are allocating dynamic data as you can see that this part stores the dynamic data and then this is for static data this is for text and this part is reserved for the kernel so this is how ram stores data Half byte, half word. We are uh, when we are discussing about the register in the DLD part, then we have seen that uh, we or we have discussed that we cannot access any particular cell in the register. We need to access the entire register. But there are uh, instructions in the MIPS which would allow us to access uh, LSB bytes or at max half LSB word from the register. So this is. This is the uh, code for uh, uh, for reading half uh, uh, reading the byte, which is load byte, and load half word. Uh, this this means the eight by eight bit, and a half word means sixteen bit. Since we are studying a thirty two bit architecture, and as uh, we already uh, know about this U, this is for unsigned. And uh, again, this is for unsigned. So uh, the difference between uh, LB and LBU is that when we uh, use LB, that means the LSB, MSB bit is reserved for the sign of the value. But when we use LBU, the entire 8 bit is used for the, for the uh, data. It could be used for ASCII characters. And then we have store byte, store half word, and so on. 